I realized that like, okay, it's really important who you pick as a partner. It's really important that you guys have the same parenting mindset that you want to, you know, parent children the same way and you have the same goals and the same values or else it's not going to work. So I guess that answers that question two parts, right? Because before I knew what kind of a dad I wanted to be. Um, but then after I had the relationship with my dad, I realized that it's going to take a lot more to coexist with a family. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I mean, it's, you know, being, being a dad, part of that is being a husband, right? You have the husband and wife and that brings kids, right? And that's just kind of how the process works. So uh, if you're not on that full same page with your wife, that makes it very difficult to be the dad you want to be as well. So I think that speaks volumes on how that thought process worked for you. Now, my wife and I had to have, you know, we've had lots of conversations from the beginning on, you know, and now the dynamic changes even more that now we have kids and, you know, I'm running a couple of businesses from home. I'm doing real estate. So our relationship has completely changed. When we first got married, I was in college and never thought about a business, never finances wasn't even a thing that I thought of. Like I never had a savings account. So how did you, from the, the time you got married and, you know, or I should say were courting and seeking to get married and then got married, how did your life change? Were you already in business? Was that already part of your conversation or were those add-ons later on to, you know, uh, like I was just saying, like one thing piled on top of another, trying to figure out now being a husband, being a dad and being a business runner. I think the things that I do are extremely calculated and mm -hmm. um, it, maybe it's just my nature. But uh, when my girlfriend at the time, now wife, were talking about having kids, it was very planned. Uh, mm -hmm. We knew that, hey, we wanted to spend X amount of time together as a couple, X amount of time together as, you know, husband and wife traveling the world, doing the things because we knew when we had kids, it was like a hey, game over. Now we're parents. Mm -hmm. So then when we tried to have kids, I mean, we batted a thousand. I'll say that. Um, so we knew that, okay, now we have kids and we were on the same wavelength. Um, as far as business is concerned, you know, I spent that time before kids building the basis of my success now. So it was there beforehand, but you know, as you climb that ladder of success, if you do not have the systems in place, more of your time will be required. So when. You've got multiple real estate stuff. You've got the W-2 going on. How is your wife involved at all in the business side at all? Or is it more that's your role? Does she have any part in that? She's a very creative person. So she's a creative director, brand management, uh, brand creation, actually. So when it comes to the real estate, she does like Airbnb staging because I, I do have short-term rentals. So she will go into a blank space and essentially be the interior designer. As far as the day-to-day -day goes, that would be me. And as far as new acquisitions, she has a great mind for, you know, Airbnb space. So there's input there. But as far as like the day-to-day -day real estate stuff goes, that would be me. How about the kids? What kind of lessons have you learned throughout your business time that you've brought into being a dad for your kids? And what kind of lessons have you learned at all about the business from your kids? You know, for example, I, I talked about on one of the fan abundance calls, how my kids are kind of like little businesses where you know you're the CEO of the business and your goal is to become a board member hopefully at the time they're 18 right i'd rather much rather be a board member than the CEO at that time where you know you go off and do your thing you give me a call when you need me you know so that was kind of the concept i had with the kids and whether you know i guess i've got uh, 10 years for the oldest to figure out whether or not i was successful in being a CEO or not but time will tell right but there's lots of lessons that, that can kind of be parallel so i'd love to hear if you if you have any off the top of your head uh, now that you'd like to share well I will say this. I feel like my mother groomed me to be the real estate entrepreneur that I am today. So my mother got into real estate as you know, single parent, four kids. She got into real estate because she didn't have a college degree and she needed to provide. So she got into real estate in like 1984 and she's been crushing it. But wherever we were in the car driving somewhere, it was Carlton Sheets, Zig Ziglar, uh, Anthony Robbins. Before it was Tony Robbins. Tony, Tony Robbins. Yeah. So he was Anthony Robbins on, on a cassette tape. So I was listening to all these things. So I'm actually doing the same to my kids. That's phenomenal. I'm not so much with the podcasts, but um, more with like quizzing them, making them think outside the box, doing little math problems, having them figure things out, even like people profiling. Like that's something my mom used to do with me of, of trying to, you know, um, pick up on subtle cues on people. And it's been great. So for example, 
So my daughter, she's six, she plays Roblox and there's this game where you have to like, you have to trade things and you have to try to like level up. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to show her the importance of you never go backwards on a trade. You only want to trade for equal or better. Yeah. And she's like taking that and running with it. And she's learning the value of like business. Like if I give you this, you have to give me this. I'm only taking equal or greater value. Yeah. And I'm like, so she has like a little portfolio of like these things. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, I feel so proud that, you know, she has like these little things in her portfolio of being traded. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. How, how I've like incorporated like my business life with my parent life when it comes to my kids, you know, I'm always trying to find opportunities to find teachable moments. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I would have never thought something like Roblox would have been able to use this, but I mean, lessons can be used anywhere and that's, that's phenomenal. I think it's great, you know, that you started that journey as a kid, listening to all of those and remembering that. And would you say that that made a pretty large impact on your thought process later on, or did it take a while to sink in, like from the whole listening to, you know, Zig Ziglar and Anthony Robbins drive around as a kid? Um, did that sink in then? Do you remember it sinking in or did it take a while before it kind of kicked in? No, I think it sunk in then um, because I even remember, I mean, not being entrepreneurial as a kid, um, but I feel like I was always, the word I'm looking for is um, salesy. Like I was, you know, I don't want to say the word manipulative, but that's yeah, the yeah, first yeah. word that came to mind. <laughs> like if ever I wanted to like get my own way. So for example, if I wanted something from my mom, I wouldn't just say like, Hey, I want dessert. I'd be like, listen, if I do these things, maybe we can work in a dessert, you know, but I remember doing that as a kid, like trying to, you know, barter or tr trying to work in, you know, instead of Start saying, I want, I want to write, you know, I, like I remember, so I remember being like 12 years old and I wanted a moped and I gave my mom a business proposal. I still remember to this day. <laughs> I gave my mom a business proposal as to why I should have a moped. I mean, it was well thought out and written bulleted points. I mean, it was pretty convincing, but it didn't work. But <laughs> I, I remember to this day, these are the kinds of things that I did. That's phenomenal. Right. And part of the reason I asked that is knowing that was something that you had, right? If it was something that impacted you that early, then that's stuff we should be doing to impact our kids right now, right? Which is exactly what you're doing anyways, right? We know that one of the books I love the most is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, just kind of discussing and breaking down why we, how we think about money and why we think about money the way we do. Granted, you can use it in any number of ways, why you think about life the way you do, religion the way you do, whatever it is. A lot of it comes from whatever framework we built when we were a kid and where, you know, what we saw and how we worked it. Either you're running towards that same thing or you're running far away from it is typically the case. Um, and it seems that you you ran right towards it and you loved it and you kept it going. And now you do the same thing with your kids. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I really do. And a great book on that is also The Psychology of Money. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it talks about even not just your family upbringing, but also like the year you were born is going to impact how you think of money and how you think of business oh, yeah. and, and things like that. I'm trying to really shape my kids with the views that I have on money. And, you know, money is not the root of all evil. You know, money's just a tool and it's not going to make you happy, you know, but you, yeah. you need to be well-rounded, you know, things like that. Just trying to instill the same values that I have. There's things I catch myself still doing. You know, I, I started off very paycheck to paycheck, as I think I've told you before. And it's such a process still, like once in a while, I'll revert back to, you know, some of the scarcity mindset language, you know, even when I'm talking to my kids, be like, hey, like, you know, I can't spend money on that. Or it's like, no, 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 that's not the language I want to use. It's not that I can't spend money. Like it's, hey, they're like, money's a tool. And if I use it for this, like maybe that's not the right tool for the job. Like maybe I shouldn't be getting that. Or maybe we should be looking at this way. Or, you know, what kind of business things can we do that earn us more money to be able to afford these things? Like the boys can't wait till I buy my plane. They're planning on buying a plane and they're like, oh, I really want to get on a plane. Yeah, I, I get it. Right. But, you know, how can I make this a business expense and make my life better? And then talk to the boys about that, you know, and using it as a business tool. So, the way that we talk to our kids about money, the way we talk to our kids about business really is going to shape a lot of, of how they think. So I'm constantly thinking about that. And um, sometimes I feel like almost too much to think about that. You know, it makes it difficult to just, you know, let the kids be kids. You know, do you run into that at all where, you, you know, you feel like you're stressing that too much or do you feel like there's a decent balance in your approach? I think there's a decent balance because, you know, as much as I want to say that this is the way it is and, and I'm a softy, I let them be kids too, but you know, I do make them earn the things that they want, right? 
So, you know, even when it came to potty training, I had a full sheet on the fridge with check marks, yellow and brown check marks of, you know, the things that they <laughs> needed to get done. And at, if they got to the end, they got a prize or a toy or something like that. Um, and it worked, worked on both kids really well. They were really excited to put the check marks up. 